So today what we're going to talk about is a procedure that's called cool leaf. It's a shortened version for something that's called cooled radial frequency ablation. I know, a lot of fancy terms. We're going to break it down as we always do to kind of give you an explanation about what underlies the process, what are the various different stages, and what we can really be able to do with this. So cooled radial frequency ablation, in essence it's new, however, it has a historical background which has been out for quite some time. So the new portion of it is that there's a cooled portion of something that's called radial frequency ablation. Many doctors use the term cauterization and that's not quite correct. What we're utilizing is we're using a special type of probe that's contained within the needle that it emits heat energy. And that energy is directed towards nerve supply in different parts of the body. And in essence, what it does is it scrambles that nerve from being able to work, but it only scrambles it for a period of time. The thing that's unique with the new technology is that instead of scrambling it only for the element of six months, this can be able to scramble it for the order of nine months to two years. So what does that mean for you as a patient? What it means for you is that you can be able to potentially get pain relief for nine months to two years from us doing a procedure which may last about 30 minutes and doesn't require you to be put off to sleep and it doesn't require for us to do any cutting and you go home the same day. So what's the elements of exactly what we're treating? So mainly what we use it for is the element of typically the knee or the hip. There's two parts to the actual procedure. The first part is a test. Let me emphasize that again. The first part is a test or something that we'd call a diagnostic procedure. What we're doing is we're giving local anesthetic at multiple sites, which are going to be the same sites that we use that type of technology that I talked to you about before. But the reason why we're doing it is we're trying to make a decision about whether it's going to be worth it to you and to us to proceed to doing the full-blown procedure. So if I was to give you a representation of what that looks like in terms of the context of the knee, we're looking at the element of the knee and we can be able to see that femur bone, we can see the element of the patella, we can see the element of the tibia. And what is present around it are certain nerves that basically supply the element of the knee as a whole particularly the front portion of the knee. And if we can be able to stop those nerves from complaining and giving signals up to the spinal cord, we can be able to prevent that knee from giving you problems. So the first part, or the step, the initial step, is we give you local anesthetic at three different sites. The challenge, though, is that we need to take those needles all the way down to the element of the bone in order to be able to capture the nerves that are present in those three locations, okay? So once we do that, we know that that local anesthetic is only going to last for a certain period of time. So it's critical, I cannot emphasize this enough, it's critical that you keep notes because we know that that pain relief is not going to last indefinitely. And what I want in those notes is for you to mention what your percentage of relief happens to be. Is it 10%? Is it 30%? Is it 70%? Is it 90%? That's very important because then it's going to give us an idea about whether we should go to the next step. So what's step two? Step two is we take that special type of needle or probe that I talked to you about before that emits that type of heat energy in those same three spots at a different time, typically about two to three weeks later, and each of those areas receive that heat for about a minute and a half or so. And from there, you can be able to get pain relief, as I said before, that can last anywhere from nine months to two years. That's the element of the knee but it also has application in the hip. So if you've been treated for hip pain before and it hasn't been able to give you sustainable relief, what we can be able to do is to do the same concept. What we do is we do a diagnostic procedure and a treatment procedure. The diagnostic procedure, as I told you before, is the element of something that's the test, where we're gonna basically take needles down to the areas where the nerves that supply the element of the hip are in place and give you local anesthetic. And that local anesthetic, again, is meant to stop that nerve from functioning for just a short period of time. Hence, just like for the knee, you need to keep good records so we can be able to know what your percentage of relief happens to be. So when we're taking a look at the hip, what we're looking at is actually two spots. We're looking at it, the component of how that femur fits into the acetabulum, so we're coming down on the bone in that area. And then there's an element that's a little bit more medial, or more towards the center, if you would, that's present that we're going to place two needles at. The first, again, is with using local anesthetic in that area, and then after we come back and we have a discussion and we see whether that relief was significant enough, we come and we use that special type of probe that's in place that allows for that energy to be uh, transmitted 
so that then we can be able to give relief or potentially the elements of nine months to as long as two years. So many patients will ask me, well, how do I know if I'm a potential candidate for something like this? Well, first of which, the main thing that we want to be able to clarify is that you don't have any instability. And what I mean by that is a potential shift in either the knee or a shift in the element of the hip that's going to predispose you to falls. Those are type of things that we need to have assessed by potentially a surgeon for either of those two joints to make sure that you're not going to have a problem. And many patients will say to me, well, why? And the reason why is because what we don't want to do is to make you feel better and now you think you can run and you think you can dance and you think you can do all the things that you want to do and you probably can because you'll feel better. You physically won't necessarily feel that pain that's there, but you don't have the structural support. And so what we do is we'll have you see the surgeon to make sure that you're not going to have those issues. And if you don't, then you can be able to potentially be treated in either of those two areas. So then I have other patients that will say, well, you know what, doc? Well, the issue that I do have is the following, is that I have a, a problem where I've had either the hip replaced or I've had the knee replaced, but I still have pain. Can, will this be able to work for me? And undoubtedly, it can. And that's one of the things that we see that is just fantastic, is that even though you've removed the joint itself, either of these two places, the nerves still exist. And so what we can be able to do is to target those nerves. And it's been finding extreme success in the elements of pain that's present post a hip replacement or the elements of a knee replacement. So that's the cool leaf procedure and what we may be able to do for you.